Welcome to my YouTube channel. It's your baby today. He's so handsome. He's got a haircut. It's a kid. Precious as time. As I should. That beauty shit don't take like that beauty shit take like a minute. That beauty shit don't take like <laughs> stop. That beauty shit on the snap of a finger that shit got. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um Do you cook do you cook quick? No. Cook that shit nice and slow. Make sure that shit come out right. <laughs> <laughs> Heard you. Okay, um, so welcome to my YouTube. Today we are giving you guys an update on Seven. And, um, <laughs> stop looking like that. I'm just looking, girl. I'm just, I'm just, yeah. I'm just vibing, bro. Okay. Um, don't worry about me, bro. Not don't worry about me. Okay, so we um wanted to. Are you trying to be funny? <laughs> Come on, girl. Okay, so um. Anyways. Don't be looking like this. <laughs> <over you, bro. laughs> Okay, so today we um, wanted to update you guys on seven. Um, I really don't know where to start. So if you would like to put your end up. On February 23rd, just start on that day or the day before, you know. Okay, for so the it was the beginning of the week. I had been kind of feeling um a little out of place. I recorded that I was making YouTube videos for y'all and I kept saying I didn't really feel good, whatever, whatever. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I currently don't feel well right now. Um, <sighs> I'm trying to force myself to get active and moving. I'm finna make my tea and stuff like that. Um... So anyway, good afternoon. I don't feel well, but besides all that, I will be okay. Um, I just have a lot of just these last two days, man. I've been feeling really under the weather. Um, baby seven is really just giving mommy a hard time right now, but we'll be okay. Anyways, um. Gotta stop seeing, um, I'm working on it. Y'all had asked me to do a video of me doing my hair. So this will be like a video of me trying to curl my hair and do my makeup if I feel up to it. Um, the sun is out, so I'm trying to catch the sun and the sunlight and not be in bed the whole time. So yeah, I still got my Christmas tree up. Don't worry about it. Just mind your business. <laughs> um, here's my flowers that my hubby have got me. They're still so beautiful. I love them so much. <laughs> They're so beautiful, ain't they? We are going to have a fabulous day. I'm gonna show you how I make my teas what they consist of and stuff like that. The tea is supposed to make me feel a little bit more better than I'm feeling. And I've been drinking two different teas, one in daytime, one in nighttime. So I'm gonna just make my tea today, drink my water. Um, the water I drink, um, I did the normal routine that I would usually do, which was, you know, um, make my teas, yeah. 
strength them, whatever. We had a doctor's appointment the the week before this. So um I guess they're all rolled into February twenty third. When we went to the doctor's appointment, they had told us that seven wasn't where he was was supposed to be. Weight wise, like the weight and um they said um, he was probably sick, you know, um, determining his weight, it could probably mean that he was sick, but his his heartbeat was fairly, um, was constant. It was normal. He had a normal heartbeat, but um, his weight wasn't what it was supposed to be. So, because I was five months, um, he was almost supposed to be a pound, but he wasn't nowhere near to be a pound, mm -hmm. a pound and a half. By the time I entered my six months, he should have been rolling up to a pound, coming up to a pound and a half, when he was never even close to that at all. Mm -hmm. He was only two ounces, shouldn't be three. And so the doctor had suggested that um, if we could get him to two pounds, that they would go ahead and induce me and we would just have seven early and then he would be in a that um incubator till he grow. Yeah. Um so that was the doctor's appointment. It had a lot to do with um my placenta, him not getting a lot of nutrients from my placenta. Um I have high, I had high blood pressure, um, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So before February 23rd, the day before I wasn't really feeling good, I was really just telling you I was like kind of in pain. Yeah, she kept saying she had pain in her side. And it, it hurted, but it, it was like I felt this pain before in the pregnancy, in this pregnancy. So, um, you know, just did the regular routine as in drinking. Um, the teas and you know just resting because I was really just supposed to really just be rested bed rest mainly I'm not really supposed to be doing too much of really anything so that's what I was doing the next day I just felt worse than I did the whole week and um so I just kept telling them like I don't really feel too good I'm hurting I'm hurting I'm hurting and so Bryson has said that, you know, maybe because, you know, whenever I don't feel good or something, we can do skin to skin and I'll feel better. Mm. So he was just saying, like, maybe you should just fly to me and, you know, we'll just do skin to skin. That Maybe you just um, whatever. So um, that's what mm. the plan for the day. I was going to fly to him that night. So we decided to take a nap together and after the nap I was just fly to him mm. and so um during the nap um I the pains had got really 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 bad and um it just got really really bad and I was like it was like I was in the middle of my sleep. I was in a good ass sleep too. My sleep was so good that um when I woke up to the abrupt sounds I was hearing, like I wasn't really like hip on what was going on, you know. Um the type of screams you would hear like if somebody was to get shot in front of you or the type of screams you would hear like um Pretty much just something traumatic just happened. And I was I was so in my sleep. Then when I heard when I heard the first few screams and it caught me so off guard. Cause we was on the phone, we was on FaceTime and um, I was just like, I woke up and I was like, man, what the hell going on? Why she screaming? And she was just saying it's everywhere, it's everywhere, it's everywhere. And I'm like, what what did you tell me? What did you tell me? By this time I had kind of like woke up and I was kind of thinking like, damn, I know it's something about the baby, but I ain't want it to be, you know? You know, 
she was just saying it was blood everywhere. And I was like, I was like, show me. Cause I know like women, a lot of women have the, um, the, the, the tendency, well, more than anything, my mother, she had the tendency of over-exaggerating anything, you know? So sometimes you was, I was kind of hoping that she was over-exaggerating how much blood it was or whatnot. And um, when she showed me like, I instantly like went into like a type of shock. Like I don't been in those situations where I don't seen people get shot right in front of me. I don't have to, unless I don't have to stop people wounds from bleeding on multiple occasions. Like I don't have to do everything. Like so, when I see blood, I know, I know the vibration blood um contains. I know that you can see a dead body and um you won't you won't really be moved about a dead body. But if you see blood over that dead body, it's the type of energy that it has. Um, blood is life. So, with that being said, when you when you when you, when I saw something like that, it was just like life. It looked like life was everywhere, and um, and I knew that that wasn't her life. It was Seven's life, and so it was blood from the bed leading to the toilet, and it was just it was just it was just real a shockful type experience, and um. I'm the type of person, it don't matter how negative, how bad it is, I try to keep my head up, you know? So I told her, I'm like, you know, everything's okay, it's good. She was like, there's a lot of blood, Bryson, and there's a lot of blood. And I'm like, nah, it's good, it's good. Just go to the hospital, you know, trying to keep her calm. If I ever say go to the hospital, it's serious, because I don't say that shit. <laughs> so I told her, go to the hospital, um, try to see what's going on, and just, just know that it, Everything is gonna be good, and um, after that she she um she changed her outfit. She got to the hospital. Um, I was praying. I prayed a few times. Um, they took so long to get her back there to be able to examine what was going on. Um, I had, by that time I had took a bath. A lot of a lot of a lot of time had passed, but um. It was just a lot, and um, yeah, I was just trying to keep everybody here, you know. I called mom, told her what happened, you know, just trying to. But it wasn't never in my mind, like, it was going to be like, we lost the baby. Because I don't try to think like that, even though the reality is that, you know what I'm saying, I never try to, until it, until it's, until that fat lady single or whatnot, I ain't really count no, nothing out. So I ain't want to come to that conclusion. But, um, yeah. Um, so they did a vaginal ultrasound and um, a regular ultrasound, and they couldn't find his heartbeat at all. And so, um, I had to proceed with doing the rest of what I needed to do. Um, so we had lost him. Yeah. And with that being said, though, like, you know what I'm saying? It's one, it's one thing about me, man. Um, one thing about her, too. Like, we go through a lot, and I feel like I'm going to speak on my behalf, and she can speak on hers. But me, like, I've been facing, I've been facing, like, trauma since I was little. You know, I don't really open up about it. This is my first time even getting on the camera and talking about something like this and this is all the simple fact because it's my son. Uh, but all my life, um, I don't face stuff like this, you know? And I feel like, I feel like God implements certain things to you for a reason. I feel like God give you a struggle for a reason, for you to have the strength to overcome it. You know what I'm saying? I feel if he, if he knew you couldn't overcome whatever the obstacle is, he would not give it to you. And I just feel like one of this journey, this obstacle was one of them things, you know? Um, I feel like it was more than meant to, meant to happen, you know? I felt um, it was more than divine to happen. Um, what a lot of people don't know is kids carry angels, you know, every kid. 
I was telling her this. I said, when you see kids playing with their imaginary friend, it ain't no, it's not their imagination. They're playing with angels. Every kid carry angels. That's why every time I see a kid, I'm gravitated towards it because I know wherever the kid is, I'm safe. I'm saying because they carry angels. And with that being said, Seven had some angels attached to him. It just had to come on this earth to protect us. You know what I'm saying? Seven was Seven had a purpose, and his purpose was to not be here physically, but to bring something in spirit with us to watch over us and guide us through the path that we own. Um, seven, seven spirit was brought here to make sure that um we're guided and protected whenever we think we, whenever we, whenever you walk out the house with your gun, you know what I'm saying it's certain things that seven is protecting to make sure that you don't even have to use it, you know. That's how I looked at it. You know, I just looked at it like it was an angel being born on earth because I'm I believe in in the soul more than the physical body than anything. And I know like um with him being here, with with that happening, I just know that uh, his soul is here. And um I feel it. Um every time I hear a number seven, every time I see a seven, it just don't hit the same way. Like it's different. Like I know it's something with me every time I see it now. Um, 223 if you add it up it equals 7 um, that's the date that he passed away pretty much his born day to me in spirit um, so it's a, it's, it's, it's a lot but um, she it was kind of hard for Marissa to take it in but you know whatever negative come in your life you gotta flip it to a positive and she know I'm like the biggest advocate for it and I preach it as much as I can and I gotta let her know that because as a woman, you you it hurt it, it's a different type of hurt as a woman because that's your job to carry a child. You know what I'm saying? So of course I knew what she was going through mentally, physically, emotionally, um, spiritually. I know everything what she was going through, but the key is is to not dwell and beat yourself up about it, you know? That was just the only thing within this process I feel like um, was hard. See, for me, I've been dealing with, I've been dealing with death. I've been dealing with all this stuff since I was 12, since I was 11. I stopped going to funerals after my grandpa died. I couldn't handle it. Um, it's just all about that next day, man. It's all about for every midnight, it comes with a sunrise, you know. So you just gotta keep your head high and just keep going. You know, everything happened for a reason. Just know it wasn't meant to be this go around. So we're gonna fix everything that probably hindered us on that way on our panel to make sure that next time that Seven get her successfully. You know what I'm saying? Um, it just wasn't meant this time around. And we probably won't know why it wasn't meant. I, I know, but you don't really, really know pinpoint on until, you know what I'm saying, you meet him on that other side, you know. Until you know what God had planned for you when you're not here no more. Until Seven show you what he was doing while he was in your stomach. Until Seven show you what, what he was doing when you was giving birth. Until Seven show you what he was doing after the fact. You know what I'm saying? So, it's just all about just knowing everything divine. Everything is divine to me. When the negative comes, it's divine. When the positive comes, it's divine. You know, you just got to know. You just got to know. Everything's all good, you know. I feel like I cried. I cried hard. I cried real hard that first day. And then after that, I didn't cry again. Because I just know, like, crying wasn't going to bring him back physically or none of that. So, you know what I'm saying? You just got to keep your head up and keep going. Keep a smile on your face. Keep pushing. Don't let, don't let, don't let that shit handle your soul. You know, just keep going. And I, I'm speaking a lot because I'm, I feel like I'm over talking, but I'm only over talking because I feel like it's a lot of people out there that's going through the same thing right now. You know what I'm saying? Just like she had a miscarriage yesterday. One of y'all probably had one, or last week, or last year, a few years ago, and you'd probably be scared to try again or do this and do that. Um, the black community, the melanin community. Um, I was just telling her about this today. Hispanics, blacks, melan melanated beings, whatever you want to call us, 
we go through it a lot. We go through miscarriages a lot or, or stuff like that because of it's set up for us to lose. I'm saying with hookah, we got the hookah, we got the alcohol, we got the wheat, we got the soy, we got we got everything bad it is to fuck up your fertility. You know what I'm saying? And it's up to us to know what to what the right things to put inside our body and what to put inside our body to detox from it. And that's all you gotta do. Like that's all she I feel like she gotta do. We just gotta detox a little bit. I gotta detox too, but <laughs> damn sir. <laughs> but um this time around, um, I was actually the healthiest I was ever. Yeah. Um I was I went I was I don't know. I was trying to become vegan before I had got pregnant, but I had went when I had got pregnant, I was fully vegan. Um, we did a lot of stuff, and he had me do a lot of stuff that was way healthier. Um, and sometimes, um, I don't know, some things just. I don't know. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with, um, I don't know, honestly. It's, I hate, it's a hard subject to talk about, but I'm going to talk about Look, it. it's like this, boom. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell y'all something. It don't matter how much you put into something. It matters. But then at the same time, it don't because at the end of the day, God gonna have the last say so. Um, and you can't beat that. And God, God is gonna have the last say so off the simple fact of He know things that we don't, He see things that we don't, He feel things that we don't. God has an impossible task, and God tasks. It's a burden I would never want on my back. Because I feel my heart is so pure that if I was God, it'd be a lot of shit on this earth that shouldn't be here. Just off of me being a good hearted person. Like, no, I feel like this is good. Like, no, like, I, I, I'm i that good hearted of a person that it would be a bad world because I allow a lot. But God is so, is so pure and so much and so raw and so good at the same time that. Even every everything that feels so right, so perfect, and so good, he'll take it away because it's something that he see that we don't see. It's some effect that he know will happen on on a child or on you or on anybody that we don't know. You know what I'm saying? God forbid she would have down there when it, you would have down there went into a pregnancy and, and both of y'all would pass away. You know what I'm saying? Like it just be little things you never know that he see that we don't see. So that's why I say everything is always divine because you can work your ass off. You can be perfect, but God going to have that last say so because maybe what you've been perfect at doing ain't meant for you at the moment. Probably the next time around that you be perfect at it, he going to bless you. He for sure ain't going to bless you if you ain't perfect at it. So you can just be the best person you can be and just hope that God's timing is divine. You know? Mm -hmm. Um, that's all you could do, cause he got the last say so at the end of the day. Like, man, I done seen I done seen a nigga get shot twenty two times. Twenty two times. And he done went to that hospital and survived. And I done seen a motherfucker get shot one time and that. You know what I'm saying? So God has that last say so regardless, you know. Regardless, man. It's it's just it's just he do, you know? And I respect that, you know what I'm saying? That's why I don't know. I respect it to the biggest, to the utmost thing, because I just know it just wasn't meant to be. It's some, it was something, it was something that wasn't right that he saw that we didn't feel, that we didn't see, and uh, he saw, he caught on to it. So that's how I, that's my outlook on life, and that's what keeps me going. That's what really keeps my head high. That's what keeps me motivated. That's what keeps me driven. That's what keeps me strong, because I know everything that happens, I'm in good hands because. The man of the allowed it to happen. Matter of fact, let's stop saying he in the sky. The man within, because he with every one of us, the man within me knew that it wasn't just meant to happen. So, man, you can't beat yourself on that, man. For real.
You can't. Because, like, man, in the end of the day, shit, man, you gotta have a whole life ahead of us. And shit, to, you know what I'm saying? And even with you taking the healthier approach with being vegan, with being, um, with the herbs and stuff you was consuming during the pregnancy, like, you know what I'm saying? It's probably some, it's, it, you know, it's something that you gotta work on even more to get, um, to get the best, fer best as fertile as you can be. Um, cause you got pregnant, you got pregnant kind of quick. You want no time for no detox. <laughs> like if, and there's certain herbs you can't use to detox the body cause it'll kill the baby. So you gotta use like the little herbs is like, this, it's not too strong because it'll kill, it, it can kill the baby. Like things like neem, blue ravine, guaco, all the real herbs that really knock the most, get everything out of the body. You can't use it because you'll get the baby out of the body. <laughs> like, so it was kind of tough. It, hap it happened a little too quick. And um, I feel like, I feel like we should just use this time to make sure that she's as fertile as possible. And um, I know me, I can do it. I know, I know that I can. I can make sure that. So, you know what I'm saying it's just, it's just a um, what they call that shit. I'm a little setback for a big comeback, minor setback for a major comeback. Um, uh, yeah. So we um. And then you gonna have plenty of kids after that. You gonna have one. You just gonna be dropping them bitches. <laughs> you just gonna be dropping them bitches. <laughs> for real. Um, I. I, this isn't my first, but I would always beat myself up because I felt like I couldn't do what a woman was supposed to do, but he has. Just open up, tell them, tell them how many you have. Just let them, you never know, go with somebody out there with your story. Bro. Let them know, because a lot of people don't know. A lot of people are face dead. Like, a lot of people have two or three miscarriages and then they stop trying to have a baby. But no, it's not It's not that you can't have a baby. It's just that you're not working on the things to make you fertile. Um, like, you're not, you're not working on... They feeding us the wrong shit. We eating the wrong stuff. We consuming the wrong shit. Like, we in the wrong environments. Like, let's, let's get our body right and then try to do that. A lot of people don't understand that. People not people not hip to that. So, um, so I've had six miscarriages. Um, and she told me that before, um, before, um, before, um, she even got pregnant. Yeah, um, I, I wouldn't, couldn't understand because my mother, she had 12 kids. My father had 26 kids. I'm like, what the hell? You know, um, a lot of people feel like because you ain't have a baby you was never pregnant um but people really don't know like a lot of things that w some women go through and just because you can have a successful pregnancy that doesn't mean the next person can i've met people who had it worse than me and it's just mind-blowing um but uh they and then at the end you know they always get their rainbow baby. Um, you I, only don't get it if you stop trying. Yeah, and he's not letting me give up hope <laughs> at all. Um, and I appreciate that because I was really just like, I can't, I can't do it. Like, but I know that a lot of it has to do with things that had happened to me in my childhood, and um. So I decided that since we were doing this video and stuff that y'all would be able to go through the journey with us, um, with me going to the fertility clinics and doing the stuff with Bryson and the herbs and stuff like that, that I would bring y'all along this journey for our next go round. Um, not saying that we're gonna just do it right away, but I I am starting to, I have two different doctor appointments coming up with two different doctors. And I'm also detoxing with Bryson. Um, and 
I, I did pretty good the last few days with detoxing. Um, but then, how much you shit? <laughs> why did I tell people for business? I'm just saying, this is a part of <laughs> vow movement. Vow movement is detox. A lot of people be saying, I want to detox, but I don't want to shit all day. Just getting oh, that shit yeah, out. Yeah, well, yesterday I was so mad at him. <laughs> I wasn't mad at him, but I was just like, bro, I've been on this <laughs> on the toilet all fucking night, bro. If you ain't having, cause like I shit, I mean I shit like what two times a day. He shit. He's. When, this is the. <laughs> I've never met somebody who shit like him. Okay. If your valve movement, like, if you ain't going like at least three times a day, is something wrong with your immune, um, your immune system, cause your immune system is a fourth. It takes one fourth of your immune system to clean it out. The other three is for consuming food. So if you consuming food all day, you got three. It's like your stomach is broke up into four sections. You got the three sections working hard as hell. And then you got this one section that's supposed to be cleaning everything out. One can't be three. Um, that's why the human, the body, if you go into the human body, you're not meant to, to eat three times a day. You're not meant to eat all day you suppose your body is meant to fast you're supposed to go on certain fasts because at the end of the day you only got one part of your stomach that really cleans out disease or cleans out the um that, that allows valve movement so that one that one fourth of your stomach has to be as clear as as clean as it can as at rest as it can so it can be able to you know what i'm saying clean you out a lot of people don't understand that and um, that's why i go on fast that's why I fast sometimes, like get a lot of stuff out of me. Cause if one fourth, if one fourth is the one working when you consuming stuff, imagine when you're not consuming shit, the whole fourth is working to make sure that your stomach is cleansed. That's where your immune system is. That's where sickness started, the immune. So you know what I'm saying sickness, fertility, all this stuff starts right here in the immune. You got like two brains, your brain up here, you got another brain right here in your stomach. So, um, yeah, please don't tell you. But, um, so that's what we decided to do to bring y'all along the journey of the fertility clinics, the doctor's appointments, the, you know, the steps, the detoxes, the things I'm going to be doing with my son to lead up to the next go round. Um, he is my biggest supporter. You got to be. Um, you gotta be. He got to me real quick. Real I quick. ain't perfect, but you, know, you guys, you just gotta. Especially when you see a motherfucker work, it's worth something. If you see a motherfucker that, that, that is deserving, you see somebody work hard, you see somebody that's been through something, that's been through a struggle, a rose that grew from concrete, you try your best and you make sure that you water that motherfucker as much as you can. And that's what I try to do with her. I ain't perfect. I'd be a motherfucking liar if I say that I'm just the perfect man. You know what I'm saying? But my effort is is unmatched. Um, my pros outweighs my cons. Is at the end of the day, um, I'm trying to make sure that 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 I'm not there for her. I'm there for her soul. Um, to make sure that I'm not there for her wants, but her for her needs. Um, and just make sure that I'm. Being the best I can be, and when I when I catch myself not being the best, I'm be best that I'm being on. Um, hold myself accountable for it, and make sure that I'm confident in her during times like this. I'm saying, um, when you find somebody that's just that's just good to you, or just you feel that's been through something, just try your best to make sure like you can change the narrative of what they used to. Um, change the narrative of their future. Um, even if you ain't the best person, you ain't gotta be perfect. You ain't gotta be the best person, but try your best, and that's what I feel I do. And um, I feel like that's why the type of bond we got is um is, is superior because um I just value her struggle and she value mine. So it's certain shit I know about her, and it's certain shit she know about me. You know. Um, a lot of my business ain't on, on, ain't on no internet. Um, 
Motherfuckers don't know what I go through day to day. Motherfuckers don't know what I've been facing since I was a child. Motherfuckers don't know. She knows. Um, and it's vice versa. So you got a partner that y'all share some type of chemistry or some type of pain, some type of hurt, some type of, you know, anything that just resembles strength and you know, overcoming anything. Just make sure y'all y'all rock out. You know what I'm saying? Rock out as long as y'all can. Uh, this is for everything. Uh, yeah. That's real shit. Um, so yeah, that's what's our plan. So that is um our update on seven. Um and what we're gonna be doing moving forward. So, um, just know that seven, that seven word, that number seven, my life path number is seven. Clover, my first daughter was born on 222. Two, two. Seven was born on 223. Two, um. It's just a lot of stuff. I'm a numbers guy. I pay attention to every little thing. You know? <laughs> See, when I think about seven, I smile so hard because I know, like, God just gave us an angel to be with us every day. Oh, he gave us somebody to look over us. I can say that this pregnancy was the best one I ever had. Nah, for sure. It was. It was. Was it was a smooth ride than any other ones. Um, a lot of them I kept to myself. Um, I was scared. This pregnancy, I told him, I was like, you know, you can just find another option. Um, but. You know, uh, he he was the best supporter that I've ever had. You know, he was there at the doctor visits. Um, he was always making sure he was a part, even if he was busy or he had to be on the road or something. He made sure he made time for our family. And I truly appreciated that. Cause I never felt alone. Yeah, for sure. And I feel like, I'm I feel like life is just all about learning. Um, I've learned a lot these past few years, and I know that, like, you know, I know now that leaving, um, not being there as much as you can for a pregnant person can not turn out the best way. And it's all about just living and learning and making sure that, um. You learn from your past experiences, no matter like what the motherfucker's going through or what's going on. You always learn from it. And um, I made sure myself and held myself accountable. I said, if I ever was to get somebody pregnant in my future, um, I'm going to make sure that they never, ever, ever, ever feel alone. No matter what we got going. As a man, you got to make sure that your partner is is in the best space if she is carrying your child. I don't care if this motherfucker laying up fucking your niggas. Even though that shit is bizarre, you got to make sure that, you know what I'm saying, your baby and your baby mother is in the best, best way. You know, you just got to be there the best way you can. And once that baby drop, you got to be there, still be there the best way you can. Because it's deeper than your emotions. It's about the child's emotions. It's deeper than just hers. It's about the child's emotions. And it's deeper than the child's. It's about y'all's emotions. The most important thing, y'all as a family. So, I feel like I'm more than invested. Um, I feel like that shit that just happened on the 23rd ain't, wasn't the end. It was just a start, you know? Let me tell y'all something. <laughs> I was like so devastated. I just 
could not, you know, like I was just hurt. I was crying nonstop. I I completely went ghost from everybody because I just I didn't know what to do. You know, like I just felt I felt so many things inside, but he was there. Um, he got to me real fast, real quick. And so I was able to be a cry baby and cry on him and go through this stuff with him and whatever the case might be. But I'm thankful for him and I love him so much. I love you, love you too. Love you the most. Yeah, yeah. That's the first time you agree. Hmm. That's the first time you agree that I love you the most. You said hell yeah. Say, <laughs> I said, yeah. I said hell yeah to someone. <laughs> it's and okay, she, baby. I know I love you the most. She's slow as hell. Because when she <laughs> see the video, she's going to be slow as hell. I said hell yeah to the first thing you said. And then I did that. I said I love you too. Yeah, I was like, I thought you were going to be like, hell yeah. That's not what I said. Yeah, okay. yeah, so okay. You so delusional that you really fucking talk is what I said. Yeah, yeah, so not forgetting you just said some other shit. It's slow, bro. Um, anyway, so um, yeah, this was the update for seven. Um, thank you for being a part. Um, and if you're coming along the next journey with us. Feel free to always comment below and tell us your situations or if you could relate or whatever the case might be. Um, I always love to hear, you know, other women's story. It's very empowering to also know that I'm not the only one struggling with something like this. And yeah, and we're going to bring you along our journey. And that's really about it. Thank you guys. Comment, like, and subscribe. Long live seven. And um, have a good well, night. I don't want to say long live. Yeah. What we should say? Mm. We should leave it there for seven. We should have something for seven. Like, um. Um, like, you know, like, um, you ask your, like, seven lives on, want to do something, want to make a special, like, little thing for seven. So, like, every time I post something, like, yeah. um, it could be a part of it. We need to figure out what I How about they, they find out for us? They drop it in the comments, like, what should be our little slogan for seven to keep his name alive? Um, I feel like just dropping a simple seven or something every day, like just a hashtag of seven or, you know, yeah. anything, like anything to make sure that he's a part. Um, I feel like I just want to make sure that, that y'all know, like, he's not here physically, but spiritually he's here. <laughs> he with me. I know he's with me because I'd be, I'd be smiling every time I think of him. It's like, I'm never, I'm never down about it. I smile. Um, I, I can't wait to get there. You say anything about it right now, and my eyes are just. <laughs> yeah, it's, you'll get there, you know. You'll get there. You will get there. Seven. Town. Seven. 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 Alright. Yeah, she tired. She just saying <laughs> she. <laughs> All right, well, thank you guys for tuning in, and I hope y'all have a blessed night.